A play that takes a lot of good timing on the part of the runner at third base is our contact play. We said earlier, we like to run that 95% of the time with one out wherever the infield is, whether they're in, back, uh, corners up, we're gonna be in contact, which means the ball is struck and we make a judgment before it even touches the ground, but we see down angle, we're gonna keep running when that right foot strikes the ground. You'll see guys, when they do finish with that right foot, they should be in a low and athletic position. They shouldn't be finishing like this. They should be in a runner's position. And our shoulders are always going to be parallel with the baseline. If the ball's struck and it's down, I'm not waiting to see where it goes. If it happens to go back to a fielder and he fires home and we're dead out, our on-deck hitter should be telling him what to do. He'll be saying, stay in it or score, score. Stay in it or score. You should also, though, as a base runner, be able to make that determination. You take a quick look over your shoulder. If the ball's in the third baseman's glove and he's throwing home, I know that I may have to stay in it. But if any of those infielders have to take a step left or a step right, you're putting pressure on that defense to make a play that they're not familiar uh, making. So we love the contact play, especially with one out. With nobody out, usually it's a first and third situation with nobody out where we'll be in, be in contact, where we want the ball going home, as opposed to them turning a double play. But 95% of the time, one out, we're in what we call a contact play. So he's just gonna react to our hitter at home plate. And initially, we'll just do this drill off of a tee. We can do it off of batting practice. We can do it with a screen here to protect the, third, the, the runner so you can feel ultra aggressive and safe making those first few steps in BP. Um, or we can do it in short toss, soft toss. But just to start off today, to, to demonstrate, we're gonna use a T. And he's gonna react to whatever the hitter does, but we are in contact here. If the ball's up, he's gonna react back. Go ahead, Adam. That's a tough read, but he made a good one. He saw the ball down angle. Next guy up. All right, Mike, let's see what he does with this one. We're in contact again. He's gonna get his timing. Oh, he reacted back. He was unsure. That ball was up. It was kind of a hump back line drive. That's a really difficult read. He did the right thing in reacting back. If you're unsure, react back. Let's see if we can get a fly ball now, Ed. Oh, he reacts straight back and he's gonna score on that. That's depth, that's depthy enough. He takes off. One last time. See if we can get a, another one on the ground, Mike, or Adam. Contact play is on. He takes off. Now that ball might have been back to the pitcher's mound, but still, we're not waiting to see where it winds up. We are breaking right away in the hopes that an infielder has to make a step to his left or to his right. If it's right at him, we're probably gonna be out at home plate, but we wanna make that guy make a play he's not familiar with. And if, he, we, if we are dead out, we simply stay in a rundown long enough for the batter runner to get to second base with two outs, and we pretty much have the same situation as we did prior to that. We'd have a runner at third with two outs. So the only thing we're sacrificing is we don't score on a wild pitch or a pass ball. It's still going to take a base hit to score us with two outs, so we're comfortable with that trade-off.